Hello everyone, Boyd here and welcome to another adventure in model building here on the Trekworks modeling bench. We're having some fun on this one guys, I've been uh, wanting to build this. This is the uh, 1 32nd scale Mobius flying sub kit from the classic television show Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. If you're an old timer like me, you'll definitely remember the show from back in the 60s. It was on in constant reruns all throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s. A lot of us uh, from that generation grew up watching those. Great show, and they had some fantastic vehicles on the show, and the Flying Sub was one of them. An amazing vehicle that could go underneath of the sea and fly as well, so we were just fascinated by it. And this great uh, kit that was put out by Mobius is highly detailed and a highly accurate uh, replica of the uh, ship from the show. So we're going to have some fun doing this. Uh, I've been following along a really nice... Um, build thread that I found online from a great modeler out of Britain uh, named Ian Lawrence. He's done a lot of sci-fi modeling and uh, he's got a great photo by photo build log on the internet. You can look it up. Just look up uh, pictures of Mobius flying sub and you'll find his thread. And uh, it's a great highly detailed thread where he has takes you everything from painting to lighting and all all the in-betweens. He's built a few of these kits so he's experienced at it and I'm finding it very very useful so I'm basically following along with it. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit different lighting than he uh, did with the, uh, I'll be using some miniature LED tape and things like that, but uh, the basic painting and assembly guide and some of the modifications that he did to the sub, I'm going to be doing those as well. So you can see what I'm starting out with here is uh, we've got these inner walls of the interior of the sub that we need to uh, start working on first, and um, we're using these uh, great photo etch parts from Paragraphics. Uh, you've seen me use those here before on a couple different builds. And uh, going through the usual methods here of uh, replacing all the uh, plastic panels and details that were on the kit uh, by cutting those out or shaving them down with the Dremel tool and then opening those up and filing them, out, you know, filing them open so we get a nice um, uh, clean background to put our, uh, our brass overlays on top. We've got these beautifully detailed uh, control panels that you can see here up close, if I can get close without getting too blurry for you. Uh, and they add a huge amount of detail to this and of course give you this beautiful crisp lighting when you backlight these from behind. So we're starting off with the basic steps of doing this. I'm on different phases of these panels here. I've got one that's been worked a little bit farther along. You can see where the uh, photo etch has all been put down and our, our, we have a slightly different darker shade of gray on this. Uh, then we do the wall background here and then we've got the reactor wall uh, painted here and I'm getting ready to uh, add our photo etch control panels on this one as well. Um, so I'm just going through working around this step by step and um, we've got to do a couple of modifications here as well if we if we're looking for a kind of you know accuracy in the interior of the flying sub as Ian pointed out there's these little uh, light boxes here that are mounted on these walls here and in the kit uh, location from you know directly out of the box they're kind of sitting right on the edge of this corner here and they're actually supposed to be sitting on this far you know wall that leans back a little bit so if you're really interested in accuracy you've got to uh, do a little bit of modifying here so I'll show you basically what I've done here as he pointed out in his uh, build guide uh, he just took a couple pieces of styrene which I did the same thing here uh, this happened to be 060 thick just regular sheet styrene and I cut out these small little uh, uh, inserts right here if I can get that up to you without losing it uh, and I just stuck them in there with a little bit of can or uh, CA glue and glued them in place let them cure for a minute or two and then I just uh, took my Dremel tool and sanded down you know grinded down the excess as close as I could get to the walls and then just hand sanded the rest of it out a little light skim coat of filler putty will uh, have that fixed right up and then what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take our drill and come along this wall right here and open up a series of holes so that we can open up a narrow little slot right here for our little box to get mounted on the wall there so we can get, sneak some light into the back side of that. It's a series of little round uh, lit in yellow sort of uh, indicator lights that get mounted right there. Uh, and we have the nice photo etch detail for that. You can see it on the, uh, on the tree right here. It'd be these parts right here. Um, so we want to make sure we have that little detail there. So I've gone ahead and done that on this one. I'm going to show you basically how I did it on this other side here that I'm working on. So we're just going to take this uh, insert that I've made right here, and I'm just going to stick it in, kind of um, leaning across both edges like this. I've got these uh, cut so they kind of wedge in there. Just They're just slightly uh, a little bit oversized. So I could just push it in there, and it'll kind of stay for me just like that. And then from the back side, I'm putting a little dab of um, 
of CA glue here. Let that work its way down in there, and then I'll just do just a tiny little bit here on the outside. And let that just run right down into that uh, gap that it's sitting in. Okay, so something like that. Get rid of a little bit of the excess here. And uh, we have our first one mounted, so we'll repeat that on this uh, second one here. And just kind of wedging that in place. This one's fitting a little bit looser. So I'm just going to have to hit it from the top side here first, otherwise it's going to fall out on me. Oop, don't stick my bottle. Eh, it sure did. Let me grab my tweezers real quick and we'll put this one back in place. So this one's a little bit looser than the other one. So we've got that sitting in there just like that. It'll take just a couple of seconds. Um, I'll put some on the back side of this as well. And it'll set right up and then we'll be able to uh, take our Dremel tool here, which I have ready to go. My handy dandy Dremel stylus again with my uh, sanding drum on there and I'll just uh, start grinding these down until I get them just about, you know, almost totally flush on top of the uh, original surface of the wall here so they're starting to blend in and then I'll hand sand the rest of it out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put a piece of uh, tape on here to uh, protect our uh, already painted wall uh, next to our control panel. We don't want to have any damage occur to that. That way we, once we finish with this we can uh, just do our paint blend in right there and not have to worry about that. Okay so something like that just to protect it. and. Um, just give these a little feel here and see how they're doing. Looks like they're pretty solid to me. So I'm just going to grind these down a little bit. I'm running my, uh, gr my Dremel on about number three and a half to four here. Oh, that one's still loose. I'll give that one another second. Knocked right down there pretty quick. Get rid of our little excess plastic here and see where we're at. I'm going to hit this other one with just a little bit of kicker. I'll uh, settle it down in a hurry here. You could probably cut that off uh, with a hobby knife if you wanted to. I just don't like to do that. I want to risk, you know, slipping and maybe gouging something. I've gotten pretty used to uh, doing things like this with my, uh, my little Dremel here instead. Okay, so you can see what we've got now. It's basically roughed in. As you can see, it's not totally flush yet. We've got uh, a little bit of excess plastic hanging off that, and there might be a little bit of a gap in there. So I'm switching now to some uh, 180 grit sandpaper, uh, and I'm just going to start sanding this uh, top edge here first. And we've got our tape on there protecting our, you know, the rest of our finish, so we should, should be scratching that.
And I'm just going to sand this down just a little bit um, to make sure that we don't have any high spots on it. And I know it's going to take a little bit of spot putty to uh, fill in the imperfection here. But we don't want a high, a high spot on that that won't sand out. Now just a tiny little bit on the front edge. Don't want to sand too much there and flatten that out. And now on the uh, area that we're going to be actually mounting the box onto now, getting that all flat. Okay, I've got that worked on pretty much uh, as far as I want to go with the 180. So now I'm switching to a little piece of 320, which is a finer and finer grit that I'm going to here. And uh, we're just gonna work this a little bit more. All right, so I've gotten most of the big scratches out of it now. And uh, I'm satisfied that we don't have any more high spots on this. It feels pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down a little bit of our putty filler here. And there we go. Got that little area covered up. I've already done the same process to this one, so we can putty this one as well. And we're looking good there. And about 10 minutes, those will be dry and we'll be able to sand those down. I'll sand them with some 320 and then finish off with some 600. Um, and so we'll have that done. And our next step then will be to uh, take a look at uh, Ian's build log again and see what he's done here. If I recall, he just has a little narrow slot that he opened up there on the side with a series of holes and then opened it up with a file. We'll uh, look for our part here in the kit. There should be some little boxes that we've got to uh, mount on there. We've got to open up the back and the front to get light in and then mount the uh, uh, brass uh, replacement panels on the front. So I'll go ahead and go look for those parts and get everything uh, moving forward here a little bit and come back with some more guys. Be right back. So here we are back again everyone and we're making really really good progress here. Um, I've got this wall uh, here pretty much finished up. I've added my uh, my sand color on there and I've got this box all installed all the photo etch has been placed and my light blocking is done from behind so uh, i'm ready to put the small little uh, detail decals on top of that now same thing with these panels over here it's all been done uh, i've just gone over the back of this with some uh, couple of coats of the same base color here that we have on the walls and uh, so those are pretty much ready to go i wanted to show you um, what we did to get this box mounted on here, I'm just in the middle of doing it on this other panel here, so we'll take you through that. You can see that first I've cut a little slot here on the side uh, where our, our box is gonna mount right here, and that'll allow me to mount some uh, miniature lighting on the inside of that from behind, and that'll shine up through and light up both sides of this. So 
uh, what we're going to do now is you can see I've taken this little box and I've opened up a slot on the outside for the narrow strip of lights and then the other one for the uh, control panels on the front. So what we're going to do now is we're going to glue a little bit of our, use a little bit of canopy glue here and glue our photo etch parts on. You can use different types of glues for gluing on uh, photo etch parts, but I've been having really good luck using this canopy glue. Uh, it doesn't get uh, dry or brittle over time, so it uh, and it grips really well onto these uh, brass parts. So we're just dabbing a little bit of it on here. We don't need to go crazy with it. Just a nice little bead on here, and we'll put this uh, control panel detail on first. Now this piece is, um, this photo witch part is just slightly wider than the uh, part itself. So as you can see on this part here, what you do is you allow a little bit of it to overlap onto the, uh, this kind of little section of the, of the wall right here. And that works out pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and um, get our other small uh, photo witch part put on there our little narrow strip of lights here that goes on the side. Just repeat the process here, a little bit more uh, canopy glue. And we'll lay this one down. Delicate little parts here, we gotta be careful not to bend them. Just want to make sure that I'm completely covering up my area that I cut out there. Trying to slide over on me here a little bit. Okay. What I'm looking for here is I want my glue to make a good um, seal on there and I didn't get quite enough glue on this so I'm going to put a just another little bit of bead on this. I want my glue to make a tight seal all the way around that so when I, when I paint over this that um, we don't have a light leak there. So here we go. fiddling with it here off camera just a little bit. I had to get closer to it. It's a little bit crooked there at the top. It's just snagging on the edges of the uh, cutout there a little bit. It doesn't want to move. There we go. We have that both of those panels now in place. So I'll just take a little Q-tip here with a little bit of water on it. And I'm just gonna real gently go around the edges of it here. I don't want any glue globs, you know, built up that'll show up in my paint next to it. I wanna make that area nice and clean looking. And this uh, canopy glue breaks down really nice with water. Okay, so we've got that on there looking good. And now we're going to um, go ahead and glue this down onto the uh, panel here. What, I, what I'm doing is I'm gluing this in place and letting it dry for a little while, and then I'm just masking off around it, uh, spraying my brown and then pulling my mask off and I'll have my gray box kind of all there by itself. So a little bit of glue right here. And if I get a little excess on there, I'm not worried because I'm going to wipe it off. I want it to stick on there really good and make a nice seal all the way around here. Make sure we're up at the right height. 
kind of matches with our other side here. And canopy glue does not uh, set up right away, so you have to uh, make sure you're kind of holding it in place a little bit uh, until it starts to grab about maybe four or five minutes, and it'll start grabbing on there pretty good and holding. So you can see we've got this set on there now. Uh, I've got a little bit of excess glue on the back side. I'll just use my uh, Q-tip again here with some water and clean that off, but then you'll see we'll have this panel done. I'll be going ahead and painting it to match this uh, detail that we have here. And uh, we'll be pretty much done with the um, ins installation of the panels and have them all ready for lighting and everything. So our next step then will be to uh, start applying all the uh, uh, decals onto this, which they have some really nice uh, overlays that go over all these panels that give you all that nice detail that you'd never be able to paint on there yourself and get it that crisp and clean looking. So what we're going to be doing then is we're going to, I've prepared the decal sheet on uh, listening to the advice from uh, Ian's build log there again. He mentioned that the, uh, the decals were kind of thin, uh, so he recommended applying a couple of coats of lacquer over the top of those, a sealer, so I've gone ahead and done that and they're dried and ready to go. So we'll be coming back and getting those all cut out and uh, showing the uh, process of getting those put down, guys. So that's going to really start bringing these to life. So hang tight again. We'll be right back with you with that. Well, here we are back again, everybody, moving right along. And uh, I've been starting to put some of the decals down on top of the panel here. And uh, you can see by looking at this how much uh, beautiful detail that adds on there. I'm using a little bit of uh, Microsol here to uh, get the decals to settle down a little bit, just a little uh, mild brush over with that, nothing too uh, heavy. They're laying down pretty good on their own. I've got just this little one here left here at the bottom uh, to do, and I'll uh, show you this one going down. They've been working out just great here. Make sure I put this on in the right direction. And, uh, We'll have this pretty much wrapped up, guys. Get a hold of it with my tweezers here. And we're just going to lay it right down on there. Like that. Now a little bit of Microsol on that. And after about an hour or so, those will just settle down on there and look absolutely beautiful. You can see we've got our side panel detail all done there as well. Um, so let me um, just demonstrate real quick what we're shooting for here. We're going to have our backlighting on this. I'll put my uh, trusty flashlight behind this here for you. And now you can sort of see um, how beautiful that's going to look. It's really, really going to be nice. I'll try to get my light so I'm not so bright. I'm going to have my lighting toned down in there so it doesn't wash out all the colors. But wow, that looks beautiful. And. Um, our little side panel will light up here as well as so we work our LEDs up in there. So I'm going to work my way through the rest of these panels, guys, and get these all settled down. Then what I'm going to do after I get these all dried and they're all looking good, I'll hit this whole entire thing with a uh, coat of uh, Tester's Dull Coat, and that'll seal them all up. So that'll come out really nice. I may do a little bit of a wash on these uh, panels here to make uh, that detail pop out there a little bit. But other than that, that's about it, guys. So. Be back in just a little bit here, and we'll show you the final result of all this. And uh, it should be looking pretty good, guys. Coming along nicely here. Back with you again, everyone. And I finished up working on the panels now. I've got all my uh, decals applied on all these. And uh, I've just put a, a coat of uh, solva set on them. I'm letting them uh, cure up for a little while. They've got a little bit of wrinkles in them, but they'll all smooth right out. They all worked out really, really nice. I'm real happy with it. You can see we're going to have some really nice detail on the interior of our sub now. And um, I'll just throw the uh, flashlight on this again for you once more. So you can see 
how nice that's going to look when it's lit up. Very, very cool. So we made good progress on this today, guys. I'm really happy with that. This is the first step in our build here. Um, on the back side of this one here, I'll mention that I put this little piece of black styrene in there uh, to block the light from going through the speaker grills here. We, want, we don't want that area to be lit, just the uh, indicator lights. You can see uh, basically what I've done here. We've got that blocked out real good. So everything's ready to go for the interior walls. We've got some smaller ones that go in the, uh, uh, on the flight deck area on the screens up front that we'll work on pretty much the same principle and a couple other small ones on the interior, but I thought I'd show you the main ones going together here. So when we come back for the, uh, the next video, we'll uh, be doing the, uh, working out all the lighting on this. I'm gonna be using some small uh, LED tape and some SMDs to get all this lit up and we'll get all that uh, boxed in and everything so it doesn't uh, flood the whole interior of the ship with a bunch of light from the backside and everything. So we'll work that out next. So. We'll be back with that one in a couple more days, guys. I'm having a lot of fun on this one. So we'll see you then, everybody. Until we do, take care and happy modeling, guys.